So Rob, do you have many friends? What's your definition of many? <laughs> I think when you're early 20s, you haven't had enough life experience to kind of have any strong opinions on things and strong thoughts and strong likes and strong dislikes. So like if, you, if, if, I, if I said, do you want to go to watch football? I don't like football. At 22, I probably still would. I would say, even though you are, the first question was, do I have many friends? It's something I've always struggled with because when I was younger and it was literally just me and my best friend Joe at school, the two metal heads, no one listened to metal in the entire school. As sort of we grow older, some of your friends that you had at that time at uni may have become more financially successful. Some people may be struggled. There could be an ego and resentment there. The easiest way to maintain a friendship is to have something that you both connect over. If you haven't got much in common at all, it's gonna be so much harder. So Rob, do you have, do you have many friends? What's your definition of many? <laughs> What's your definition of many? That's maybe a yeah. good start point. It's a good point, right? It's a good point. So I have, I have my friends who are also my bandmates who mm. I wouldn't just consider as bandmates, considering we haven't played together for a long time. They're, they're the friends I'd, I'd, I'd take the bullet for without a doubt. There are friends who were previously colleagues in some description, whether that's recently or whether that's way, way, way back that maybe wouldn't take a bullet for, but maybe like a low, a low, like a leg stab wound. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then there's, there's just general acquaintances you meet on through mutual friends and things like that, that maybe I'd take the slap, but then some people I wouldn't take anything for. <laughs> um, yeah, this, this is going to be a really interesting one because this is, this is stuff we think about a lot, but there's going to be some things we've not really like verbalized yet. Yeah. Or even completely figured out in our heads. Yeah. But that, and, that, and that's why I thought this was really interesting because I think mm. that like, I think the topic of certainly when you get into your, if you're in your mid, early mid twenties, we'll tell you why you were lucky bastard here in a second, I think. But I, I think when you get into your, into your thirties and, and older, mm. you, a lot of the thing, the conversation you have about friends and maybe loneliness in today's world, where most people see people from the neck up and like never from the neck down, they don't see people mm. in person as much. That this is it's partly a tr part true problem of like, do you actually have less friends? And mm. partly expectation management of how many mm. friends are you supposed to have as you get older? You know, like, do you feel do you, do you think you have less friends than you did when you were twenty five? I don't know if I'd say less, but who they were has definitely changed. Interesting. How so? Again, more comes back to the band were two different guys. Mm -hmm. The colleague, friends, it was an entirely different job. There were some previously from roles that I'd only had maybe a couple of years before that are still in your friend group. That uh, that drift the 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 further mm. away you get from from that employment level, um, so I think it's because the the situation and the environment changed. Mm. But there's always been that core handful. We, but, even, but again, it changed. Cha this is really opening up. So this is giving me some insight. Here. It's really flipping changing. The people I would call my best friends, which is a term I've always kind of had an issue with, but the people I would call my best friends from school. I haven't spoken to for for a long time apart mm. from one who i randomly bumped into at a tall concert in the o2 and the next thing i know i'm at his wedding it's fantastic but we've had like 20 years of not seeing each other yeah so you can't catch up on 20 years at a loud fucking concert and at the guy's wedding where everyone wants a piece of him so the onus there obviously is to you know if you're thinking oh, why don't you fucking meet up and chat obviously that we're going to talk about this anyway this is what we're going to talk about some of the issues that some of the barriers of maintaining friendships um and and the other kids who i would have called best friends back then I, I, again since school nothing mm. but then there's one there's there's i'd say the ones i forged in my 20s are the ones that have stayed this far yeah but it I think, still I think... changes yeah, I, th I think I always I always look at you know like when you look at Instagram and there's you, you see all you see all the positive comments you ignore them and you you focus on the bad ones. Mm. I think the same thing happens when you like compare friendship group size to other people. 
oh, I yeah. always compare myself to the people who have kept loads of uni mates, kept loads mm. of schoolmates, right? Like, uh, I, I think I think girls are better than this at guys because maybe I don't know. Maybe we can break this down of like guys reaching out or whether that's the issue. But like, she, Ellie won't see her friends often, but Ellie will. Um, Ellie, Ellie will go back and see uni mates for an event every now and again. There's mm. six, seven of them. They'll all make an effort mm. to come out. She'll go and see some schoolmates, right? She'll go see make some old jobs. And I'm like, I have one uni mate that I, I would, I would, I could get on the phone with and hang out. And that's my mate Alex. I have like four schoolmates from like back home. Mm. So I think men don't, for whatever reason, maybe it's just me. Maybe people just don't like me. But like, I think men as a whole, um. <laughs> aren't as good as keeping mm. those friendships would mm. you agree with that and if so why do you think that is as far as i'm aware looking up okay, there's, we'll get on to this but the, the male loneliness epidemic that's, mm. that's currently happening and increasing um it is report i don't under, fully understand why but it says here men are less skilled at women than making friends now there'll be gender specific personality traits empathy, things like that, that will be higher in uh, agreeableness, things that are higher in females than they are in males. But and, and, and again, that's just a very broad, broad statement. Obviously, you go deeper into demographics, psychographics, things, things change a little bit. But why are why are we less skilled? Is it because No, oh, fuck it. I'm just gonna say it. I don't care. I don't care if this is the one that gets cancelled. It's not gonna get cancelled. <laughs> but is it? But is it because like once men get into that workforce, the focus is then on rising up through the corporate ladder, building your self-employed business, becoming the man in in whatever way, shape, or form that means. Whether that's whether that's Tate's ideal or Peterson's ideal, or you want to be like Goggins, or you want to be Elon Musk and and rule the world. Well, this, 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 I don't think it's a particularly controversial point, right? Maybe my next one might be, but like in in the sense of. <laughs> When you, when you, we, we've talked about this before, like the gender pay gap, right? And when mm. we actually break down yeah. that, that that doesn't often really mm. exist and it's that mm. men tend to work more hours down to turn to leave and things like this. It might not, like, it might be, like, if just people being busy. They're working later, they're in work. They might make friends with a couple of colleagues, yeah. but it's their yeah. work environment. The yeah. wife, more often, not always, with the kids. So they yeah. might meet the parents of schools and things like that exactly. more, as the guy exactly. will, because he's at work. So he has less opportunities yeah. to sit. And if he's working, and again, the longer somebody works, the more of their free time they might yeah. want to spend with their partner. Yeah, which because marriage does change things, right? Like you see it, like my my mum and dad are like they have a few friends, but they're, they're mainly it's just them two, right? Yeah. Because if I'm working all the time, the first thing I want to do is spend time with my wife when I've got that time off. Which means to ha make friends, either you've got to part with some of that for a time being, or you've got to find people that couples that you both like. And yeah. then that becomes a little bit tricky. There's another, mm. there's another sounding board you need to kind of get through to kind of get get a friend through. And I, I'd be interesting to see the, the 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 badass boss bitches, the women CEOs, and where their friendship groups compare to male CEOs. I think mm. that would be a really interesting statistic. I that don't know, would no be interesting to look at. And it'd be, it'd be interesting to look at is does that later down the line when we see the effects of these things in the long term because let's face it your female ceo bad boss pitch is is a more recent phenomenon than it was in the early 2000s and the, the 90s etc will that change the statistics of who can keep friends or not it'd be interesting to say i'm not saying either way it will or won't but it'd be interesting to watch that without a doubt but there's also that like you, you you brought it back perfectly it's it's then the kids are born and it's more likely statistically that it will be the stay at home mum, whether they work or not, whilst the, the, the fellas out working, what are women going to do? They're going to meet the school mums. They're going to meet their friends who have also got kids, probably of a similar age. If you're still mates with your uni and your schoolmates and you're going to share stories, you're going to share experiences. You're going to ask for help as well. Whereas if I think you're the dad staying at home, you're le you're much less likely to ask for help to arrange meetups things like that because you've still got that innate i've got this handled yeah i don't need anyone else they don't they don't need play dates they've got me yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i think that's a big that's a bigger problem as well right even yeah. outside of kids of this this i got this handled sort of things because like dynamic of guy chat 
as a whole, and I don't want to get into things like guys should just talk more about their feelings because I, I don't necessarily think that's I think that's a, that's an entry level thing of helping blokes with their mental health. Yeah, it's it's certainly not the start. But whereas girl, I, I again I don't want to generalize, but I I think that with with the maybe extra levels of empathy, of girls chat. There is if something goes wrong, if there's big life moments in their life, girls don't tend to get fed up of girl helping other girls out. Right. Whereas everybody will tell a bloke, hey, we got you. You know, if you need mm. to talk, you can we can talk. And that's great. And that's a big step in the right direction from maybe mm. 20, 30 years ago. Mm. Mm. But it's rarely that's always true. Mm. Right. Like I've had this wife talk to guys after big like life moments in my life. And then you just start to see them pulling away from you because you've yeah. now become the burden in the group because they don't want mm. that negativity. They just want to yeah. get on with their yeah, life. Of course. So, I don't know if there's a dynamic there that like mm. why we don't keep long friends because as you get older like more life events happen you lean yeah. on those friends you've got around you and let's say out of five new friends you make mm. one or two of them would be the person mm. that'll stick out so it's like a filtering system like my best mate nick right i've known him since year one at school right mm. the amount of things we've had tra- me moving to the other side of the world we've had like all these things that could have tested our friendship hasn't but for every one person like Nick, there's probably been about five people, a few people that just, I lost contact when I moved to Hong Kong, a few people mm. I lost contact with in there. And I think this is where the expectation management thing comes in with it. Because mm. I know, you didn't go to university, did you? No. So like, nah, not I, I know from university, you're, you're, this is where proximity, I think, gets harder as you get older. Because when you're in a place at uni where you're just, put in this melting pot like, especially mm. for me i was at aberystwyth university and it's just this really small town with two nightclubs and you just met people on nights out and there was like mm. it was so easy to make friends that i made close friends very quickly because i had to live with some people i i, you know, I could go hey do you want a beer i'll be there in five minutes and so you get this great um array of friends and then as you get older like for me to go and see my best mate nick i need to go all the way to wolverhampton mm. You know, if yeah. I want to see mates up north, you know, my mate Jack in, you know, up in Newcastle, I'd have to go all the way. To, that's a number of hours, like, drive. Yeah. So, the, 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 as you get older, we, we compare ourselves. Like, Look, I had loads of friends when I was 24. Yes, but you're also in a place where it was easy. Like, yeah. I've spent four years in Hong Kong, and people have loads more friends in Hong Kong than they do in the UK. Yeah. And it's, it's because Hong Kong is like university. It, everything is so close. I could go out with someone for a drink in 10 minutes. You know, <laughs> tops. Um, but yeah, actually, like I think there's a bunch of stuff that changes. Everyone has that explanation. Should I should I have as many friends as I did when I was 20? What's happened? Mm. And I think there's see there's there's a there's a proc there's a proximity issue there. But also what you like. I think when you're early 20s, you haven't had enough life experience to kind of have any strong opinions on things, and strong thoughts and strong likes and strong dislikes. So, like, if, you, if, if, I, if I said, do you want to go to watch football? I don't like football. At 22, I probably still would. Whereas yeah, now, yeah. like, uh, for me to make a friend, it has, they have to have a similar interest to something I like. Mm. In some way, shape, or form. Definitely. The shared experience. Whereas when you're younger, the key word you said there was proximity. You're, you're in this environment. And this is where your colleagues can end up becoming your friends. And, and through whatever social interactions you have with people, proximity creates the connection rather than the friendship because there are there are like say colleagues uh, that you'd class as a connection that you probably have in this, like nights out for things like that that you wouldn't necessarily call a friend but that, 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 that's not to knock it in any way shape or form um but again like that shared experience of something in common is more important when you're older mm. The guys I know that are still having those share that, that are still closer friends, not necessarily meeting up on as a regular basis as you were in your twenties at the age of twenty two, but it's more based around shared shared experiences. Nine times out of ten, that shared experience is everyone's kids all together, big barbecue in the garden or something like that. But sometimes it is like with my friends, um, they had I think they always had it. I think they had it since school. I'm a tiny bit older. I'm a couple of years older than them, so I didn't really know them in school. Uh, they do Dungeons and Dragons like once oh, yeah. a month, once every couple of months. Sometimes it's all of them. Sometimes it's a small handful, but that's their that's their shared experience. Just playing a playing a game. Sometimes there is different 
it's different game a different games night. Um, I don't understand that game at all, by the way. I've watched people I've, play I've, it. I've, I've, and it I've seems played. like some some guy at the front is just reading a, a random script and then people are acting off it. I don't I don't understand how it works. I've, I've played they, they wrote me in and I've played four, maybe five no more than five, four or five times. I still don't know what I'm doing. Comes to me and they're like, What do you want to do, Rob? I'm like, I I just still don't know. And they go, well, you can do anything. That's the problem. <laughs> You've given me yeah. too much choice. <laughs> Give me two choices. Fight, run, I'll choose from there. Like, whatever you want me to do. But it is also that little bit. And it goes into, I'm not knocking it at all, because they've been ridiculously mm. funny nights. It's hilarious. Because it's not just the game. It's chatting about life. It's other jokes, things like that. Um, but it could all, but I, I have friends that the thing will be a rugby game. Now, I've been to maybe three, four rugby games in my life. And my, one of the ones with us. And one of the ones with you guys. Yeah. Um, my initial thought when someone suggests a rugby game is, mm, I'm not really going to know what's going on. Like, I, I enjoy it. Great yeah. atmosphere, great experience. But sometimes I'm like, well, I've got to stand out in the cold and look, not, <laughs> not even like, I've got to crane my neck to look at you guys to talk. Because like, <laughs> for me, that's not it. Sometimes, sometimes it's a gig, but again, like you've got three hours of the night where bands are playing and you can't really talk to each yeah. other and you realise how the hell did we ever communicate in clubs in our 20s? Because this is, this is ridiculous. No wonder all our voices are fucked. <laughs> so shared experience is obviously an important way to maintain some of those friendships. But I think this is where some of those friendships can dissipate because maybe you don't enjoy that stuff as much anymore. As you previously mm. did, exactly. or again, People like change, right? They get into families that. and yeah. other things. And like, the, the, mm. how many people, if they look back at their friendship group, how they met most of their friends, started with clubbing, nights out, yeah. maybe drugs, yeah. you know, alcohol. Mm. And as you get older and you don't want drugs and alcohol and loud mm. nights out anymore, it's like, have you have you still got that thing that connected you in the first place? Because at, mm. at the underlayering of that, like even, again, Nick, I'll use Nick as an example. He's my best friend, right? Um, and I think he will be for the rest of my life. But if we, 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 we met at school, that's maybe slightly different, but there's lots of mates I met at university that now like I go, okay, we started off as a drinking buddies. And then under that, I was like, do we like any of the same stuff? Like really, <laughs> you know, we get on, we have a vibe, but when he talks, when someone talks about books and literature, I'm just like, what? Mm. And then I'm talking yeah. about wrestling and rugby and fitness. And they're like, well, so it's like, yeah, like it becomes tricky. Unless you have loads of stuff mm. going on in your life that you can always have mm. your back, like a story to tell, it ends mm. up getting very much like a. So people yeah. just start to distance, physically, yeah. metaphorically, and physically in mm. terms of, of life and moving further away. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just funny, it's funny you say that. I, I would, I would just get out in the open. I would say, even though you are, the first question was, do I have many friends? It's something I've always struggled with. Yeah. Because when I was younger and it was literally just me and my best friend Joe at school, the two metalheads, no one listened to metal in the entire school. Oof. No one was listening to it until rap metal became a thing and it became a bit cooler for the mainstream to listen to. We were listening to things that people people would, we, we were the weird kids. We were 100% the weird kids. But I could also connect in the other groups because I was sporty. I was connecting with some of the sporty guys because I wasn't the dumbest guy. I was connecting with some of the, some of the nerds as well, although I was really punching with my knowledge skills there as well, without a doubt. Um, but I always liked the idea. And this is, this is something that, you know, people, people who grew up in that metal crowd will, will empathize with is that you kind of then get used to being the odd one out. So you yeah. embrace it and you internalize it. And it's cool that you're into dark, weird shit and yeah. crazy growly vocals and stuff like that. And so I, I just ended up embodying that persona of this is what I like, this is me. I, I did, it feels like I'm having my own favourite band here that no one else knows and it's cool stuff like that. And then you get interested in what that band does and, and, and you create an identity around it. And I think there's still things in me there where I've never really connected with what happens in the mainstream anyway. I was yeah. a Chelsea fan for many years, but I wasn't the most hardcore football fan. I could tell you the Chelsea fr from from early 90s to maybe 2012, I could tell you everything about Chelsea. As soon as I didn't watch football for two years, I've, I've forgotten it all. I couldn't tell you anything about the modern modern game at all. But outside of Chelsea, I couldn't tell you shit. I couldn't tell you anything about another team's lineup or their history or anything like that at all. 
Like, so there's little things where I can connect with other people through that little similarity, but I've never been as mainstream in mainstream as my, with my interests, with my, my thoughts, with my personality, with my opinions and my, my identity as such, which makes it harder because most people are in what you would call that classic yeah. mainstream type I, thing. I, you know? that, that brings a really interesting point, right? And we'll get onto like technology because it, but if I, if I just ask that question that we get into like social media and zoom calling mm. people off moment, which I think is really important and worth talking about, but something I don't think anyone talks about with this in terms of making it harder to make friends is the ability to make small talk, Right, yeah. you're not going to go into yeah. a conference, you meet your mm. mate for the first, like someone at the first time at a bar or mm. at a club or whatever else, and then start talking about like deep politics or like whatever you're into. But mm. I, I, I had this thought the other day that, I think I was in I was in the car with Ellie and I was like, do you know what? I think Taylor Swift is 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 amazing. She's a megastar, but I never hear any news about her. And he's like, what? I hear news about her all the time. <laughs> and and do you think there's an element of like it's harder to make friends because we now have these echo chambers mm. of like I don't. Fifteen years ago, I would have even if I didn't care. I would have known a little bit about pop culture in general. I would know who's in season. I know with number one. I would have known uh, a little bit about the current celebrities on television. Whereas now, because I can just funnel down a YouTube channel, I don't know. I don't know what music's out. I don't know mm. what's on telly. I yeah. don't know who's, who's a celebrity right now. Around Dexter yeah. still around? I don't know. You know, like I. <laughs> so there's these things now where people it's like they, they is it. It's so much harder to make small talk because all you've immersed yourself in is your interests. Yeah. To so the course. point where. You, you can't connect with a wider audience, which brings, like, if you look at it like a sales funnel, it's like less leads coming into the funnel. Yeah. You might be really good at getting people halfway through the funnel out because you have a deeper understanding on certain topics, but not as many people come in because you can't do that small talk. Do you think that yeah. makes an impact? Massively so. Massively so. That, and that's why I think the, the better, <laughs> the better, without going down this route, but the better biz coaches out there that work with funnels and help you teach them, um, you, you shouldn't just, you know, target and try and target everyone. We covered this last week anyway, but with friends, you should, you should. it's like an, yeah. it's like an anti-sales funnel with yeah. friends, isn't it? It's like, yeah. I, I, I need to broaden my ability to talk to as many people Oops. as possible. Selling. And I don't have those skills. We've mm. niched down our lives into like, like mm. in my day to day, I will watch things about fitness. Mm. I will maybe watch like shows I like on Netflix. So not necessarily mm. what everyone else will like on Netflix. I will watch wrestling stuff. Right, I've never had. I never have to turn on the telly now and go, "What's on?" Mm. So that means there's, there's, when that happens, people, there's other people that also are what's on. Like mm. one of the, um, again, I'll bring up Nick. One of the things we bonded over when we was a kid was the OC. Right, we didn't choose the OC because we just like teen dramas. I turned on the television. It was oh, we had five channels at the time. It was on, mm. and I went, "I'll watch this," and he'd also done the same thing. And we bonded over that. The other was a show called The Mole, which Carista came back on Netflix. Really good. Watch it. Um, but they did a British version, which was not any better about 15, 20 years ago. But similar thing. Now, if, if, if in that really formulative years of our friendship where we were just getting really connected, if those shows didn't happen, if he was just watching things about oh, I don't know, food, I don't know what Nick likes. Yeah. He, he, like, he likes drinking and eating. So he watched things about that. And I watched things about wrestling. We may have never had that initial connection in the same way. Yeah. And I think now people mm. don't because everyone has a very, very niche mm. uh, watching habits rather than a more generalized, here's celebrity culture. Mm. Yeah, it can be. I, th I think it goes both ways as well. Some people, whether they never had that niche identity growing up or whether they kind of abandon it for the identity of being mm. a couple a married couple with a kid and you watch what everyone else is watching, listen to what everyone else is watching and kind of lose that, that, that sense of, 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 of self, basically you know, what makes you, what made you unique before, which is got, you were, we're in an era now where we have the ability to communicate with more people than ever, but you also have the ability to create the biggest echo chamber that stops you being able to connect with more people mm. than ever without a doubt. And sometimes it's not through your choice. Sometimes it's through whatever the media decides you're going you're gonna to see or read or this learn is, about. This is the interesting thing, right? Like, we are, we're in a situation where we have more access to people than ever before. Like, 10 years ago, we wouldn't have been able to have a conversation right now doing mm. this. So, like, yet people are more lonely. 
Mm. Why is that? Like, I'll give, I'll give an idea. I, I'd, go I'd, on, go I'd on. say, I'd say, in the simplest way I can put it, is we've got more to worry about now. Mm. Got a lot more to worry about. For, for politically, socially, criminally, financially, wise, financially, we've got so much more going on that takes our attention. How much more energy can you put to? Oh, I've got to maintain friendships as well. Yeah, it's it's you've got you've got to. Everyone has to put themselves first. You have to to be the best version of yourself. You have to be putting yourself first before you then try and impact other people and keep your connections and whatever. And when you've got 50 million other things to worry about, how, how, how can you even focus on being your best version of yourself, which I don't think most people are, which certainly not from a financial and health related perspective. So I think it, we've just got wo- way much more to, to worry about now than we had before. And, and I think this, the, things like that is interesting because things like this accumulate so mm. much you know like and I, I'm, I'm not going to get into my private stuff whilst we're hitting record but as, as you know and some people might know it, listen to this if they know if they can work out when this came out um i've not had the best week and i had a life life incident that's rocked me now what i've realized with this week is and this is probably a benefit from it is that i got so caught up in my business that there's always more things to do being self-employed mm. right so I, I could do my outreach and I could do my content and I can do the calls that I need to do. And then I go, well, I need to study. I need to create this document. I need to create that document. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to network with this person. And while all these things technically can be done, I think there's a, like a law of diminishing returns when it comes to output when it, within your business. Like yeah. two hours of work, yeah. four hours of work is probably better. Five hours of work might be a little bit better, but not quite so much. And then it sort of dissipates off to being worse. And you just end up like just doing stuff for the sake of doing stuff. And then you don't look after your life and get your life in order. Now, what this week has taught me is like, my business is fine, right? Look, I'm not doing as much outreach this week as I probably should be. I'm not maybe getting as many leads in, but from a client care perspective, I'm doing way less of that. And the standard has not dropped at all. Mm -hmm. So you realize how much of the stuff you're probably doing in your day is so superfluous. And Mm -hmm. all those little things like extra scroll on Instagram or um, just doing stuff for the sake of doing stuff or trying to busy being busy, they drain you at the end of the day. Yeah. And like, yeah. The thought of going out and seeing a friend, you know, like in, in at the end of that day, it's like, nah. Yeah. yeah. And it, I think that's, I, I also don't think as well, it's like, and I think it comes back to that small talk thing in terms of social stuff. You have to be, the people who use social media as social environments are the yeah. people who have grown up being able to know how to be social. So yeah. for sake of all, right, I've now made a lot of friends through this podcast. That has always started for me understanding how to go and drop a, me- a DM to somebody or reach out to somebody or contact somebody first to in order to get that initial conversation and then have the ability to go from small talk to deep conversation to, to where people are now. But if you've never been taught this, right? Like there's a, gr- a great example. Is I have a friend um, in Hong Kong. I'm not going to say his name because I want to say like I'm sh- smashing his ego and calling him out. You might know him and talking about him, but he is an absolute Casanova. Absolute Casanova. Like, genetically great-looking guy, always in shape, even if he doesn't train for a month. Like, you know, those guys, right? The Luke McGurks of the world, but it's not Luke. And <laughs> Shout out, Luke. Yeah, shout, shout out, Luke. Luke. Just for being Sexy no- annoyingly out. perfect. Um, <laughs> but he, and then he always, he's always, and he's now in a committed relationship, he's always had a woman, right? Never, ever struggled. But I, in, in four years of going out with him on nights out, I have never ever to him chat of a woman in a nightclub mm. ever mm. now maybe he can maybe he does it when i'm not around and i've just been in the bad night but it, that says to me people are getting really good at tinder and bumble and swiping and they are lost in the real world so then mm. when you're looking at friends we don't like it's so mainstream to talk about dating apps mm. now i, th- I yeah. assume friendship apps in this uh, exist in the same way but c- could you tell me what they are so now we've, we've, we've got a world that's become more digital that, yeah. and that the world is accommodated for with romantic relationships, but we have not necessarily accommodated it mainstream for social relationships. Mm. So we've now got people that don't know how to have these conversations and now kind of like, well, I don't know what to do. Where do I find friends? What do I do? Whereas, you know, we don't have that yeah. gamification of it like you do with dating. Mm. It's, fun, it's, fun, it's funny you say that. My friend, 
We're talking about this yesterday. Well, a WhatsApp group that has some friends and some acquaintances, in, which I think is an important thing to maintain as well, which mm. we'll get, we'll get onto strategies later. Yeah. We were talking, we started off talking about population collapse. This is how it all came about. We were talking about population collapse because, you know, people aren't, uh, the, the numbers of people that haven't had a sexual partner in the last 10 years is, is tripling or so, something along those lines. Similar stuff to what we've spoke about before. And one of the guys referenced someone at his work, youngish guy, like mid, mid 20s, again, great physique, immaculate chat, good at what he does, got his shit together on the dating apps and having a horrific time of it. But the mm. problem is with the dating apps, there's always someone the other fucking side. And were we ever really meant to build connection through pixels on a screen first and us trying to put a, a image of what we want the other person to see rather than our true self? Probably not. Whereas do you, you can- do you think, I know, Sorry to keep off there, but I think it's a relevant point. Do you think um, online friendships can be as, um like close as in-person friendships? I think it's, I think it can. I definitely think it can. I don't think it's ever going to be the majority though. I don't think that's going to be the case majority of people. Um, I think, I think, I think you've got to, there's got to be a reason you've got to make, you've got to, to like, like we have a a, a podcast every week. Mm. I can see you one of my best mates, you know, like, but I, and I've met you, we obviously have met in person, but we've met online way more than in person. I knew of you when we were colleagues because Mm. we didn't work in the same gym rather than actually knowing you. So Mm. like, I I think, I think that like social media, everyone blames social media for the lack of friendships. I think it's how people use social media. Yeah. Without a doubt. And, and what are you using social media for? Most people are using social media to look at other people's lives, which affect and, and negatively affect their emotional state. We're not using social media to maintain our current connections, recreate old ones, or even create brand new ones. That's not the majority of people. It's and if anyone says that that's not the case for me. All you've got to do is look at people's following and follower list. And there's always going to be two vast differences there. Business perspective, entirely different, of course. But people would much rather have more people following them than what they're following, or that being equal. And for what fucking reason? Because we're all using social media for the wrong reason. Mm. What were the first social media sites, really? MySpace. Okay. MySpace. Not MySpace. Friendstar, things like that, Okay. There was, I can't remember what it was called. It wasn't that, friends. My, my, MySpace is an interesting one as well, right? Because mm. MySpace allowed you to have a bit of personality. So there was yes. still a bit of individuality yeah. with MySpace that people who came onto mm. your page made sure yeah. to, this is my kind of person or not, mm. based off the music, mm. the background picture you put on and how you curated yeah. that site. Whereas then when Facebook came along, it made us all necessary. We're all really a number. Mm, yeah. Instagram page, of course, if you hunt through someone's page, you can find out who, how people are a bit different. Yeah. But like an Instagram page and another Instagram page look relatively the same. A Facebook page yeah. and a Facebook page is relatively the same. Mm. So very quickly, we we've got this thing where everyone's very uniform. Yeah. Which I'm, I you know I don't know if that has anything to do with anything. This is me. Strange, right? It's almost it's almost yeah. like it's almost like being back at school, isn't it? It's strange when you really think about it. The opportunity for you to be the individual that you are online and yeah, it kind of just platform automatically almost conforms you to everyone looking the same. The, the MySpace thing was an interesting one. There was just before MySpace came out, it wasn't Friendstar. I can't remember the name of it saved my life, but it was, it was like, it wasn't called Find a Friend, but essentially that's what it was. You would type in, you would create your profile, a picture, a little bio about yourself, and then you could you could find your people were using it to find their old schoolmates, Absolutely. long long distance friends, family. It was the most basic thing ever. We're talking early two thousands, very very basic. And I think you had the opportunity to message, but not instantly message. It was like a it, almost like an email through their internal server. Yeah. But beyond that, there was no other connection. We're talking to a point where you can either arrange to meet up, and if you're the distances increase is not going to happen or you can keep messaging through the platform there which you're probably not going to do because again everyone's got their own shit to worry about there wasn't really the opportunity to exchange mobile numbers most people aren't happy were, were never happy giving their their home number out unless it was immediate friends and family you're not going to give that out to old acquaintances whatever 
So, so that platform just didn't really do anything. And then the next level of platform comes up and then mobiles come out and suddenly, you know, now, now you don't need to exchange numbers. You, you've added a friend on Instagram and it's instant messaging and you can call people through Instagram and, and it's become a, a, a yellow pages in itself. Shall we say yeah. some of you kids won't yeah. understand what the yellow pages is, but <laughs> no. it was gangsta. It was cool. <laughs> or the BT phone book. The BT only, phone book. The only time I've ever heard Yellow Page is called Gangster. I love it. Gangster, man. It's gangster. I used to <laughs> love sitting, sitting, reading through that going, that's what I'm going to be one day. I'm going to be this. Look at that geezer's ad. That's like an epic. But <laughs> I didn't do anything with that knowledge. I just went, doesn't matter. I'm going to be a rock star at 21. Didn't become a rock star. Um, but <laughs> it's, 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 the, it's the opportunity. The opportunity to connect has always been there. Of course it has. But now it's obviously a lot bigger than ever. And it's a lot easier than ever to find those old school friends if you can remember names and if they've got the social media profiles. But there's also the opportunity to just look into strangers' lives. Which yeah. Everyone has that little 1% voyeurism inside them. Every single person. Some people is 90%. Some people is 50 but everyone has 1%. You that's want a distraction you... for maybe yeah. either spending time with the people around you in real life mm. to cultivate those relationships yeah. or... Going, you like, like, go back to that find a friend thing. You had one purpose. So you weren't distracted looking at strangers' lives. You were there to find school friends or you were there to find people in your area that liked Mm. rugby, you know? And do you think there's also an element here of why people lose friends in their 30s is like, especially for guys, is financial change and status changes? Because as you go through your 20s, everyone is also on a level footing, right? So I'll use you an example. Everyone's making the same amount of money, right? They have that, but as you said, that blank mm. space with um, experiences, so everyone's willing to do stuff. Um, whereas, as we sort of we grow older, some of your friends may, that you had at, at that time at uni may have become more financially successful. Some people maybe struggled. There could be an ego and resentment there. Or at the very least, like if I'm if I'm a rich snob who's like you know sold his business for three million pounds, and I like cheese and wine nights at the Savoy and you know you you just tend to like get in a, mm. a six pack of Stella and you know mm. have, have, have watch a film in the house your all, your lives start to divide because you can't do what they now want to do because yeah. that experience has changed and they might not want to do what you can do because it's like mm. yeah you know, so like that, that over time as you get into your 30s people's people's lives naturally grow further apart mm. and that, that's sometimes sometimes necessary and sometimes something that people actually need to properly work on. Without a doubt. It, it, it keeps coming back to that shared experience as well. It, 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 or the mutual experience. What, what are you both mutually interested in? That's the, the easiest way to maintain a friendship is to have something that you both connect over. If, it's, if you haven't got much in common at all, it's going to be so much harder. Mo- most of the connections I've lost over time Oh, hardcore football fans, hardcore drinkers, other sports. They can tell you everything about football. They can also tell you everything about the rugby and the cricket and the Formula One and the boxing. I, I could maybe maintain knowledge of one sport in my head at any given time. As soon as I got well into the Olympic weightlifting, I started losing what, track of what was happening in, in athletics. And athletics was my thing before. I, and, and vice versa. You, you flip between those things. So, so what, what can you... <laughs> I'll, I'll use this as an example. The first cigar bar I ever went to, I went with a friend. We had an amazing cigar. We had an amazing old fashioned, and they were playing jazz. They were playing jazz music on the uh, on the the hotel. It was like part of the hotel thing uh, on the speakers. And we had an amazing proper proper hipster. This is right. We had an amazing cigar, an amazing whiskey, and we spoke about jazz for about three hours. Fucking incredible. Absolutely loved it. Second friend I ever went to a cigar bar with, we had an amazing cigar, amazing whiskey, and we just spoke the most random shit all fucking night. Nothing to do with jazz, nothing to do mm. with anything. The type of conversation other people would listen in and go, what the fuck are they talking about? And we're just pissing ourselves laughing. That's the mutual shared experience, mm. not the fact that we're both in a cigar bar. Yeah. So I could, I could, I could have me and my, my best friend, so to speak, could one day decide to go watch a football match. I don't think we ever will because we've not got mutual interest in football to begin with. But if we went to a f- football match just to be in the same place at the same time, what are we going to do? We're going to talk shit for fucking three hours straight and not have a clue what's going on on the pitch. Mm. So it's not only just a mutual, a, a shared experience of a physical space. It's 
it's, it's how the what's the mutual um what are the similarities in your identity as well because so i i i could be wrong i don't believe i'm wrong i think it's the same i think jordan peterson had this with uh, on a podcast with his daughter not so long ago where they were talking about relationships, not just in terms of marital relationships, but friendships as well, is do people stay together by being more different or by being more similar? Ooh, interesting. And as far as I can remember, it is more similarities, but you can't be the same person. If you yeah. become the same person, identity's lost, you become the couple identity. And, and that doesn't exist. You can't have a, t- a two-person identity. Well, in this day and age, you can. But you can't have you can't have you can't have complete loss of your identity. Whereas if there's similar, if you're more similar, cool. You've got crap tons in common. You've got enough of your own individual personality. Do you think that but depends on the decade, though, as well, right? Like, so, like in your twenties, yeah. you're developing your own identity. Then in your thirties, mm. you you are two people. And this again, mm. I don't know, but this you are two people that have separate paths that come together. In mm. your forties, you may be slightly close together because again, mm. you had more time, maybe more life changes, maybe you have kids. To the, so let's say twenties, you have all the friends, you're in the same place, proximity, same town, same city. Then th- you you meet your partner, you're two different people on identity enjoying navigating the 20s. You get to your 30s, yeah. you come slightly close together. Maybe you get married, right? Yeah. And in that time, then you maybe move away from certain friends. You maybe move to other countries. Yeah. You maybe um, bought a house, right? So you can't afford to do anything with people for a while. Yeah. Lose contact with people. And then in your 30s, um, you've still got those two separate identities. And then in your 40s, maybe you start to have kids and yeah. you become even close together. So like yeah. we're saying that we can't have the shared identity couple but i bet if most people look at this and look at their parents i would argue say they probably have a shared identity couple now don't be wrong yeah. i don't think my mum and my dad have the same personality mm. but my mum and dad's lives are very much intertwined now in their 60s mm. you know and i don't look at that and go that's i think that's a good thing i don't think that's a problem but maybe that would have been in their 30s if they've almost given up on the next 30 years to just be yeah. with each other yeah yeah, it's a, tr- it's a tr- I can't, you know, I can't say <laughs> too much about what's the, the perfect way to, to keep a marriage going when my one doesn't exist anymore. But if I think back, there were vast differences between two of us, big mm. differences between two of us, especially when we first met as well. Like she, she loved a club, she loved faces in, in Ilford, if you've ever been there. Um, I, 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 I haven't, but, you know, I, I'll, you I'll, I'll go and have a hunt for it, literally, after this. Shall I? I'll go have a walk and find it. You couldn't pay me to, to go in places, basically. <laughs> you couldn't pay me. In my 20s, probably would have gotten it, but I didn't. Um, like, some, some, some big differences, but enough in common for there to be at least icebreakers conversation when we first met. Because otherwise... If everything's too different, and when I was dating, this was the big thing of whether I chose to go on a second date or not. If there's absolutely zero in common, I don't see the need to keep connection with that person. Mm. Unless they're super, super nice, whatever. I don't see the need to keep connection with someone you've got zero in common with. Because what are you doing there? You're just kind of hanging on for a connection that's not going to blossom into anything and just ends up being a number in your WhatsApp that you're not gonna that you're not gonna do anything with. It, the ones where they got a second, there was at least. I'm trying. I'm trying to take like attractive connection out, out, completely out of the mix here as well. But I wouldn't have gone on the date anyway if it wasn't. <laughs> but in terms of in terms of like a second, I know people get lonely on a second date. Um, then I think it's more about. I think the first date's like let's find what we got in common. Second date is now tell me who you really are. Tell me who you mm. are, the individual. And yeah. let's see how much further we can take this. And I think that happens over a longer period of time with friends that are more related to work, similar hobbies, things like that. That takes longer. You're not going to know who the complete individual is on day one of your, of your work. I think, yeah, it's, it's, You're it's not going to release that, either, yeah? Right? And yeah. that's why I think, I think we now I maybe have, because mm. we're in these echo chambers, more people have the ability to have deep conversation on a very small mm selection of topics yeah. but very few people have that small talk so i reckon a lot of friendships now aren't getting past the first date yeah. if the first date's even happening exactly. because they, they, they don't know how to create that because they mm. all they go into is i really like i don't know politics so i'm going to go into a deep youtube video on this they've never mm. understood small talk they've mm. never had to do it yeah. you know and there's 
So I think I think before we go on to the tips, I think I think to <laughs> close off this bit. If anyone's listening to this and thinking, yeah, like, look, I'm in my thirties now. I was I was I was a bit worried about not having friends. Yeah. I think a little bit like when we did is the genetics to blame for your weight loss. I think there's a little bit of empathy and like, look, yeah, I think it's normal. And I think most people in the thirties and forties are do start to look back in their early twenties and go, what happened? Why did I have like 10, 15 friends? And now I barely have one. Like, I think that's normal. It doesn't make you broken. doesn't make you a bad person. doesn't make you uninteresting. It's just, life and mm. I've, I've known people that I've, I've lost contact with for years that come back and they become really best friends in your life again it, it, it can but i think going into the next stage it's like well right if you're feeling there's a deficit in friendships it's down to you and no one else to yeah. put the steps in place to find new people in your life which is more mm. tricky as an adult you have less time you have less money yeah. so i'd like to join yeah. there's things i'd want to do and i'm sitting there going well i also might have this priority of building a business i'm putting some extra income there I, I, and i go if i want to join a a, a gym for bodybuilding and a CrossFit gym and maybe mm. a, I know another club. All of a sudden, these things pile up. Mm. So I appreciate that it's difficult. But yeah, like if we go through, what are some of the tips that you have um, for building friendships mm. as you get older? I thought this this was cool. So Robin Dunbar, evolutionary psychologist. Um, he, he's been on podcasts all over the place. Most people would have heard something by him. He estimates that you'll probably maintain or not maintain you'll have 150 meaningful connections across your life but most of those will be difficult to maintain so it just shows how often your environment changes and who your meaningful connections are across your entire span of your life 150 right which sounds like a lot that's like 150 friends that's cool and it might be nice to think that you'd have 150 people turn up to your 50th 60th birthday party or even your funeral but it, chances are that's not going to happen, right? Um, so how do we maintain this? And I found something by a guy called Tim Urban, which I thought was really, really cool. So it comes back to, if you want to, it's, it's all about making. If you're sitting there thinking, I wish I had more money, I wish I had more time, I wish I had more friends, all those things you have to make. You have to make more money. No one's going to give it to you. You have to make more time. You're not going to get extra hours in the day. If you want friends, you have to make friends. You have to be a bit more active. Guys, especially, we don't reach out to each other. So if you're sitting there thinking, I haven't spoken to my friends for a while, and they're not reaching out, it, you probably haven't reached out either. So stop being a pussy and be the first one to reach out as well. You know? um, but if, if you want to prioritize, you have to prioritize. That's the thing. You have to prioritize who you're going to give a fuck about. Okay. So I found something by a guy called Tim Urban, where he says, it's a little bit nerdy. But you are going to split your friends into tiers. Tier one, tier two, and tier three. Tier one's friends, your siblings, which he's put in inverted commas, which doesn't mean your, it doesn't just mean family. It means the closest people to you. The ones you'll just share life's ups and downs with. Anyone listening to this now could probably think of two or three people who that is. The ones you're sharing life's ups and downs with. Tier two friends, your pretty good friends you'll attend their wedding but won't have any duties is the example that he's given um tier one friends probably best to have a whatsapp or telegram group and he says schedule weekly calls but maybe like weekly chats whether that's meet up maybe that's even a meet up tier two aim for once a month and tier three once a quarter your tier friends tier three friends are your not really friends they're the people you might meet up once with every few few years so if you were to use your tier one your siblings your tier two your pretty good friends your tier three you're not really friends sit and think about who those people are then you know who to who to contact mm. like maybe once a quarter you're going through your tier three friends list hey guy how you doing haven't seen you for a few months haven't seen you for a year what's new want to meet up it's not that hard to send that message really and i'm talking to myself here as well yeah. because i don't do it as myself me people. neither Tier two, pretty good ones. These are ones you've shared some experiences with. You've been to weddings, things like that. You're likely to have a lot in common. You're likely to to have shared experiences and chances are you can, re I think they're the people you reminisce with more when you meet up than anything else. And then your tier ones, they're the ones you can just talk about the most random shit. You can tell you can tell them the dark stuff, the good stuff, and you can make stuff up as well. And, and, and it doesn't matter. Um, so I thought I thought that was quite interesting. As soon as I looked at it like that, I'm like, oh, I know, my, I know who each of those are. So now and I know you, who you they might are. Be able to see, and you might be able to mm. see which, which level is lacking. Yeah. Is, and, yeah, and, yeah. and now, if, if tier yeah. one is lacking, 
right? Mm. If you're like an only child like me and you realize, oh, I don't have too many close friends, that's harder to solve. Of course. But then that means that you maybe have to go a little bit more on the offensive of starting meeting yeah. people with closer connections to you. And yeah. I'll come on to that in a second. Mm. But then if you know there's less tier three friends, one, it's like, okay, is it that, does it matter that much? Like, yeah. I'd rather have five great friends than 50 acquaintances. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I, I'll start my ones with um, one that I think goes into this in terms of like maintaining friendships or a great tool to reconnect with old friendships. And that is the use of traditions. Yeah. Now, I think as, as like girls will meet up and just go for like, we'll go, we'll go for margaritas, right? And they're like, yeah. there doesn't need to be a thing per se. Obviously, there's birthdays, things like this. Mm. Whereas guys don't. Guys, like, no. like there's got to be a reason. And when I see the, like, mm. the, the, the things that have done really well, it's, there, is a, there is a slightly fun gamified lad tradition. And I'll give you two examples that work really, really well. One was my, my dad's um, friends. Uh, and they annoyingly don't do this anymore. This did drift, but it was great for such a period of time where all my dad's school friends, every year, they went to a different one of the houses for bonfire night. Mm. So like, they provided the food, invited everyone around, nice. and then everyone else nice. bought a firework and we let them off in the garden. So like, and so it was a great tradition. Every year, you know, you were going to meet up with your school friends to do yeah. X, Y, and Z, and and have that catch up. Another great one in Hong Kong. There's some something we had called the Kowloon Experience, where every other Wednesday we went to a different restaurant on Kowloon side and mm. ate very local food. Right. And that we we did that was supposed to be for our six week span until one of our friends left Hong Kong. We loved it. It's still going today. And it's Love one of the it. things I miss most in Hong Kong. Mm. And I think, like, if you're someone now that's like, wants to, like, you're, you're starting to feel you like losing connection with friends, you don't see people as often, think, what is something we could all enjoy that we could, I can maybe float this idea to my French group now? Look, hey, it, how about once every six months, we'll um, all go to the last game of the season together or like every year? Mm. Then it gives things like people will block it out the diary because as you get older, yeah. this is the thing, like, like, again, I'll throw Nick as an example. I'll go, hey, Nick, I'm back in Womburn. Uh, are you free? I'm not free for the next seven weekends. Because life gets in the way, kids stuff, family stuff. So yeah. if you can have something that's such rooted into the yeah. yearly calendar that yeah. they block it out in advance, you know, at the very least, you've exactly. always got that. And that's I think that, and for, even, for, even for new friends, it's like if you have that group going, you can start to slowly invite people into it. Like yeah. that Kowloon experience, when people left Hong Kong and the group was getting smaller, they stopped being mm. like, oh, I've got a mate that'd be really into this. And now mm. they've just created these connections that I, I made new friends mm. in Hong Kong because of that and keep yeah. connection with my current friends better because of that. I, yeah. One of the lads moved to Costa Rica after a year. He's come back to Hong Kong. Now it's obviously multifactorial reason for that. But the <laughs> one of the first things he did, he messaged the Kowloon Experience WhatsApp group. I went sending uh, my, in my application for the 2024 season. Nice. <laughs> no, like, like that. I think that stuff yeah. that stuff works, works really, really well. That's cool. Yeah. The, the, that's exactly it. When, if I think about it, a lot of my tier two friends, and to an extent, some tier three ones as well, are people that I met on the music scene. They were people you would see again and again, and a lot of the time, the most fun things for us to do were playing the regular yearly local festivals. So you might have gigs in the year, one band's not playing, they're doing other stuff because life gets in the way or vice versa, or you're just playing different venues and you're not really playing the same ones as you did each other at the start. But when it came to the local festivals and the promoters knew what bands you wanted there because it's the, the good ones that are going to get the crowd going, we're, we're all, in a, again, like then it becomes, that's the mutual thing. We know we're going to see those guys at this thing and we all hang out together and it's, and it's a fun flipping thing. We all watch each other and support each other. And then next thing you're doing, you're going to their gigs to support them. You hang out before, you hang out afterwards. And they, that then, before you know it, you're like, yeah, I would consider them as, I would consider them as friends. Mm. Some of them have been to weddings and, and vice versa and other, other things. But again, it's maintaining it. Some of those connections definitely have slipped since the bands don't play as much. Because that, mm. and some of those festivals shut down and things like that. So then it's, well, that's life life changes environments change what could you do to rebuild that is there another way another yearly thing you could schedule in advance or 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 if you see i'm terrible for this is seeing tier two and tier three friends open party sort of stuff like that 
and I don't go because that's not my, that's just not my, that's not where I thrive. It's not mm. where I thrive. But I know if I went, I would know a lot of people there from tier two, tier three, and I'd have a great time and I'd connect. And I might have to get out of my comfort zone and flip between different friend groups all night. But it'd still be a lot of people there, I know. And that's people I haven't seen for a long time. Yeah, I think that's an important lesson, isn't it? You've got, you, like, every, every one of these things requires you to get out of your comfort zone. Like, yeah. my next one was networking groups. And networking groups is interesting because it's not everyone thinks networking is a business thing, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Now, I, I'm, I'm sure if you Googled networking groups in your area, that everyone has one. But I, I remember the one in uh, London called Meetup. And I definitely think it must still exist. Mm. Definitely download Meetup if you if yeah. you want to make more friends. And it's, it's sometimes yeah. a bit scary going to events on your own. But you, 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 doing sure. that a few times, you will find people that do the same things. And I went yeah. to business things. But like there, there used to be like like run groups and, like for me, pro wrestling mm. groups and yeah. all this sort of stuff. And I, I remember going to an event once. Um, oh, I can't remember the guy's name, but you, you would have known who he is. Bold Liverpool fella does a podcast. He, the title of the talk was What Facing 100 Years in Prison Taught Me About Happiness. He was one of the big... So he, he was, it was great. It was, nice. This guy yeah. was a... Um, mm. He moved from Liverpool to be a stockbroker in America. And he, uh, you, the pressure was on. He started doing uh, cocaine to just keep him awake to, to do these things. Then he started yeah. hosting these parties where he was giving his friends and his colleagues drugs to keep him going. Then he started to think, well, actually, I could probably start selling these drugs. And he eventually made more money than he stopped brokering, stopped becoming stock brokering, <laughs> and became one of the biggest drug lords in small, like, oh in the script. Um, in, 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 is it Sean? I'm trying to remember his name. In, like, in the script, uh, Liverpool guy, you wouldn't even think. He's one of the biggest drug lords in American history. And he, they basically, had riot police came in, broke down his door while his parents were there and all sorts of things. And he faced 100 years in prison. <laughs> Obviously, he didn't serve 100 years because um, yeah. he's out. But mm. he, he wrote letters and he smuggled them out about how bad the prison standards mm. were. And it, that changed how all the prisons were in America now for better conditions for inmates because of that. And now he does Amazing. talks about, like, just make people nice. don't go down his path, That's works cool. for children, does a podcast. Yeah. Um, but, like, like that, well, I went on my own there. I, I didn't really make any friends. Like, I was a bit mm. nervous to chat to people. But let's say I went to three or four of those meetups and I didn't speak to anyone new because I was nervous. Maybe after a while, I would say hello to the person next to me. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I think doing those things, networking, I think the lesson here is networking isn't just for business. Mm. You'll find networking groups just for people who are like you. And in a world yeah. now where, as we said, as you get older, your interests become more defined and tunneled, you have to almost filter through and go, right, how do I find people that also like wrestling, in my example? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, these things exist. If you are listening to this and you're genuinely thinking, I'm in this bracket of, I don't think I've got any friends or I want more friends. And it's, it is kind of on you to fix that, to make those friendships happen, those connections happen. You'd be, how, you'd be surprised how many people are sitting, thinking the exact same thing that probably would be a great match for you. Yeah, and, and I will say, I don't to cut you off, but I would mm, say uh, here, mm, I, I, that, I, am, I am that person. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. So like if you're thinking that so I'm to sad to be that way, yeah. I, I will tell you I am in that place. Yeah. And there's plenty of ways to meet. There's plenty. Like the meetup is just one of many websites. There are some that don't even have websites. You'll find them on Instagram and they're big monthly meetups, things like that. That I, I don't know if it still exists actually. I don't see any I don't hear anyone talking about it anymore. That dating app Thursday where you could only the, the app only worked on Thursday. So everyone's okay. profiles are there on the Thursday for you to look through, swipe, whatever. Da -da 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 -da. And then you have your connection, you have your chat, and then by the end of Thursday, it's gone. And so any chats that you had, any connections that you had, like, go. Unless unless you're a smart guy and you get their fucking number, so you get them off the app, God's that, sake. That, the point? That, that was the whole point. It was yeah. just on the Thursday. So a bit of... You know, so you're not creating pen pals on Tinder. Yeah. But they did live meetups every Thursday as well. They had venues all over London booked out. I thought it was a terrible idea because what actually ended up happening was everyone in their friends group just ended up downloading Thursday, getting the tickets for these things. And from what I heard from people who went to these events, you go there and it's just friend groups everywhere. So it's not that fucking defeats the object. They should have done something better. Maybe if it has ended, maybe that's why it ended. But there's so many different ways. Again, look locally. 
Look in your nearest city. Look, think about what interests you've got. Find those Facebook groups because I see a lot. I'm in a, fa- I'm in a Facebook group of one of my favorite bands of all time called The Wild Hearts. They're one of those bands that could, that, that, that were set to explode in the 90s on all the music channels and then drugs and drink and disconnection just kind of ended the band. And they've always had their hardcore cult base that they've never broken through again, um, which is such a shame because their songs are incredible. In their Facebook group are people that meet up on a regular basis mm. and they put, we're doing our Chompsford Yard Arms monthly meetup. Come down, like it could be good to see this guy again, this guy again. And all they're probably going doing is going and they've got the mutual connection of the wild hearts. So they'll talk about the wild hearts. Yeah. And if I went, if I went there, if I went to one of these evenings and wanted to make friends, I could go there, grab anyone and go, what's your favorite wild heart song? Mm. Boom. Conversation that's going to last the entire fucking evening. But then it will switch. It will naturally switch into other areas of your life. Tell me more about yourself. Where was the first time you saw the wild hearts? Oh, what was your job at the time? What were you doing at the time? These things will just naturally come out if you let them, but you've got to find those opportunities first because they're not just going to fall in your lap, especially if you're a male. Another There's one no that is certainly UK wide is Eventbrite. Like, and that, I, I, Eventbrite. Went to, I went to watch mm. the Royal Rumble with my favorite YouTube channel, nice. the organizer, to meet up with those nice. wrestling fans. It was great, you know. Wrestling fans are weird, right? It's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's so strange that if you watch wrestling, these are these big, like jacked, shredded alpha male super confident super swagger you know like you want to be the pro wrestlers yeah but the fans clearly don't no. like the uk <laughs> fans are they're, 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 they're absolute nerds it's really strange it's like this like is not yeah. like um it's funny, it? but like like that was on a, just an eventbrite thing and mm. again i bet if i went on to eventbrite I, I bet i could find other events that i could go to of course that wouldn't be so scary going on my own the other one i have yeah. was just clubs do you like to do you like do you like CrossFit? Do you like tra- like this is why I think a lot of the time why as we like the um, Chris Williams because of menopause, right? Everyone's into bodybuilding in their twenties. And then mm. they all switch to things like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and things like this in their thirties. Yeah, yeah. And we've spoken about this before as a priority shift. Like I don't really care mm. as much what I'm looking like. Maybe I've got married, mm. I need to be the biggest jacktus person, I need a new challenge. But I, there, I reckon there's a new there's another dynamic of why this 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 shift happens to people's training habits because bodybuilding is a very insular thing and that maybe doesn't matter in your twenties because as we said you are the, probably the abundance of friends that you're ever going to have so mm. I can have a very solitude type way of doing my training yeah. but then as I get into my thirties and maybe I don't have that friendship groups training now becomes a way to have that community and this is why you see a lot of people thirties and above do CrossFit or High Rocks or G- yeah. BJJ. Because it's a community that you don't just have from going to David Lloyd or going to your local bodybuilding gym with your yeah. headphones in on a leg yeah. press. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's, that's a big thing, especially for me. I've, I've noticed very recently how often I'm putting my earphones in or I'm just looking down at my phone straight away. My phone's come out of my pocket. So you, are, you, you, you isolate yourself a hell of a lot more. You really isolate yourself. And then you go into the gym. At The gym's an odd environment anyway. But most people are doing the same thing there. Earphones in between sets, looking down at their phone. So like environments like that aren't necessarily always the best type of place. But you know in there you've got something in common with people. But again, it's just not the best environment for chat because we're all doing it. We're all isolating ourselves. And you're there not necessarily as a joint pursuit with someone else unless you've got a training partner but crossfit's the perfect example crossfit exploded nothing to do with the programming nothing to do with the exercises they were using nothing to do with the games exploded because it created a community unlike any other gym was building at the time unlike anything that the fitness industry had seen community of people training together working together building social events together Uh, the competitive uh, environment it created as well between between peer groups no wonder crossfit became this massive massive community and there are still people that i see now i'm not involved with any crossfit gym anymore but i still see all the pages and there's people that have been going there a long time with the same friends or you see them on a night out and it's with the friends that they met from the crossfit place that that's powerful 
Mm. I'm not saying everyone has to go do CrossFit. I'm definitely not saying everyone has to go do CrossFit. But it can be whatever it is for you, whether that is Wild Hearts, whether that is music, whether that is, even if that is politics, even if that's your thing that you want to connect with people over, you've got a way to connect. You've got something about you that will connect with other people. And you have got them. You've got more methods now than ever. Mm. It's so backwards that we're seeing loneliness epidemics when the opportunity to connect is bigger than ever. Crazy, yeah. right? So, so to close to close off this mm. show, what is one thing that you're like? Well, this is because, and this is a call to action for everybody. But I'm going to start mm. it with us, right? This is your action point, mm. right? If you're listening to this, thank you. Subscribe, like, share, tell everybody. Like, use this as your friendship thing. Tell or everybody in your Instagram. Say, I want to connect and I'll start by sharing you a fantastic podcast. Do you want to be my friend? If you do that, you'll make some friends and I'll be your friend. Um, <laughs> but maybe you, maybe you don't want that. But uh, <laughs> like, so what is the, from this show, this is your action step. Go and do something now that we have said, right? It could be find a networking group. It could be reach out to an old friend. So Rob, what is the thing you're going to do when we stop on the record today to help your social circle? The thing I'm going to do mm. is go back through my WhatsApp of the last two weeks of people I haven't replied to and reply to and people that I haven't seen for a while. The, the conversation has always been, we need to try and meet up. We need to try and meet up. And we haven't done so. Start that conversation. Yeah. I think mine would be, mine would be somewhat similar, but I'm also going to find networking groups in Guildford. I'm going to see, what, see, what, see, what, see yeah. what's around. Like, I don't yeah. know many people in this area. I've been in this office. Mm. So I think this is, this is my, yeah, of this is my oh, chance yeah. to do this. And then, I also might start to think about UK tour. Who can I train with in the semi-local mm. area? Just go to different gyms. Yeah. Um, yeah. But also, man, where, well, if people want to be, find you and become your friend, where are they finding you? Friendster, Mind, MySpace, Bebo, Grinder. <laughs> that's where you find me. I probably still have a MySpace <laughs> account that people can message me on. I probably, probably. still have a Grinder. I thought it was great. Meet up with guys in a sauna. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> 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 um. Fat Loss Fast Lane, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, that's yeah. the best place. I can't be asked to set up on any other social platform. So, yeah. That's no, it. yeah. yeah. For, for me, yeah. Mm. If, you, if you want to follow the channel, Simon Kingsley Dutton on YouTube, that's where all of these will go live. Uh, but maybe not the best place if you want to connect with me and, and have a chat. Mm. So, at Kingsley Dutton, uh, K N G S L E Y D U T T O N on Instagram. I'm always very active there. Very happy to chat. But, man, pleasure as ever. Catch you soon. Thank you for listening to the Self Made Podcast. If you're like me and like binge watching podcast episodes, click here to watch our latest episode. Or if you want to stay in touch and find out when the next episode goes live, click here to subscribe to the channel.